The uh, Central Women's Services abortion mill that's been open for over 20 years. Right, 23. Um, recently closed, and you guys were privileged enough to actually purchase the facility. Yep, we actually closed it by purchasing it. Oh, really? So we, we bought them out, kicked them out, and now we uh, are in the plans of renovating it and making it a memorial to the preborn children. Well, before that happened, though, we um, you called me and, and told me what a toilet, nasty, filthy place this was. And uh, we came up there, and uh, we've got a little video here that we shot inside the facility that we uh, want people to look at and kind of get an idea for what one of these closed mills look like. You know, most people that are watching this or most people in the pro-life movement have never been inside an abortion right. mill. Right. And I think this is going to be a real education for them. So um, why don't we take time right now and watch the video that we shot in Wichita of this closed abortion mill. I think, Troy, what we have to first establish with people is that this place didn't deteriorate over years of being abandoned or, or empty. This was an operating abortion clinic just a few weeks ago. No, the signs are still up. The phones are still ringing here. Right. This is an abortion facility that was killing children just a couple of weeks ago. Right. And it's also not a function of the fact that this is a uh, rundown neighborhood because right next door we have a crisis pregnancy center. The building is just as old as this one. Sure. And it's nice. I mean, it, oh, it's yeah. not rundown and shoddy. Uh, they've kept it up nice. Yeah. It's a difference, I think, in the pride. And you cannot take pride in killing babies. And I think what we're about to show people is going to prove that. Certainly there's no pride of ownership in this place. No, I Absolutely not. Well, let's walk on down this way, Troy. First off, um, Troy, explain this yellow line to us. Well, the Crisis Pregnancy Center is located just on the other side of this line. Right. And uh, pro-lifers would stand just toe on right here and were able to uh, present a message of life to each of the women that were entering into this facility and coming out. And so they put the line there to keep you guys from... Right. And that, this property is owned by a better choice, and they have always offered their property to the sidewalk counselors and allowed us to stand there. And, of course, we're able to bring women in right into that door wow. to offer them help. All right. Now, Troy, was, was this the front door of the, of the abortion clinic? No, this door was always locked. Uh, there's a solenoid here, and you can never get in. Uh, the only thing this door was used for is as the women were coming out, uh, they would uh, very shakily oftentimes come right here and get into a car door and speed away. Okay, uh, if they, this looks like when this building was built, this was the front door. If they're not using this for the front door, how did a woman get into the facility? Uh, they'd have to come in through the back alley. Now, uh, Troy, so this is where they actually came into the facility and parked, is that right? Right, right. The abortionists would park here and each of the patients would line up here. Wow. And when they came in, this would be the first thing that the woman would see. This would be the door that they entered into the abortion clinic. So this is the first thing, Mark, that uh, the woman would see as she's coming in from the back alley. Uh, obviously, this is a, a filthy, putrid conditions. In fact, this was actually the room that they would use to sterilize the equipment. The sterilization machine sat right up there in the corner. Wow, that's amazing. You know, you think about sterilizing equipment in here. You got a an open a door that opens to the a parking lot. You got people just walking back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I look around this room and I see things like, uh, well, there's a right here under the sink. I mean, this place is filthy. But you've got a an ungrounded electrical outlet by right. the water inlet right and there. The, and the and it's leaking. Right. Uh, look at this. You got a hole in the wall. What is that? I mean that. And you know, I just you just look around here, and I mean, you look up here. There's look at the. Uh, cobwebs. Cobwebs, wires coming through the walls. Right. The most common surgical procedure is abortion, and this is the sort of facility that it's done. Show me the rest of it. Sure, right down this way. And this is the office manager's office here. Um, it's pretty, pretty nasty looking. I've worked in a lot of offices. I wouldn't want to work in one that looked like this. Wow, Troy, look at this a biohazard sticker here on this little, basically, is a closet door. You know, if there's anything biohazardous put in here, I, wouldn't you want it more secure than that? God knows what they stored in there. Obviously, it wasn't very secure. Now, brace yourself. Uh, another real clean, sterilized room in an abortion clinic. Oh, this is, this is amazing. Look at the, look how nasty it is in that cabinet. The cabinet's got a big hole in the side of it. Again, you've got ungrounded outlets, you've got nasty looking carpet and the floors are, the walls are terrible looking. 
Yeah. Anybody thinks the days of the of the back alley abortion are over? They're nuts. Okay. Now, Mark, this was uh, not a procedure room. This was where they stored their records. Medical records. Yeah. Right. Um, they didn't take much pride in it either, did they? Look at the the ceiling and and um, you know, they they did a double drop down ceiling. It's got holes in the wall. Okay, here's another odd shaped room. We don't know when, what went on in here, but one thing that's very interesting is this door uh, doesn't meet fire code. It's locked. This is the one from the outside that we noticed was cocked. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if anyone uh, had to exit this building, they would come to this door and they absolutely could not get out, which violates every fire code in the country. Now, a sitting in the United States would give you a certificate of occupancy with that no. sort of situation. Uh, light switch that doesn't work. It didn't work when y'all no. first came in. And uh, you'll see this is where uh, the pregnancy tests were probably performed. And uh, you notice the toilet is leaking and they just caulked around it. And this is where women would uh, sit and wait uh, prior to their abortions. But I've got to show you something that is extremely interesting. Uh, right over here, you've got a sticker. Uh, declaring this place to be, as of last year, an NAF member. National Abortion Federation. Right. And it says that this facility certifies that it complies with all the current standards of quality abortion care set forth in the National Abortion Federation's 2005 clinical policy guidelines. Wow. It's nice to know that you're in such a high-class facility. Like I'll tell you, there's some real high standards here. Right. Yep, sure is. For some place. Huh? <laughs> Not for a medical facility. Uh, maybe breeding cockroaches. Right. Well, it does do that. Okay. Okay, Mark, this is where the staff would uh, sit and probably collect the medical forms and so forth. Right. You, you can, know, th that's one thing I keep thinking about is uh, forget the the lack of cleanliness from a medical standpoint for the patient. I wouldn't want to work in a place like this. Who'd want to come work in a place like this every single day? It's you see the little bottle there, it says Odo Ban. Uh, we found uh, throughout the whole clinic uh, tons of air freshener. Well, it needs it. Well, this is room number one, Troy. Right. This was uh, a procedure room and a lot of babies died here over a period of about 23 years. Wow. So the table sat here. Obviously, this is a uh, the uh, plug where the uh, suction machine was plugged into, um, but this is where it all happened. This is one of them. Again, you got a exposed outlet over there, and by the way, that's a 220 outlet. Yes. That's amazing. That's a 220 volt outlet with no cover on it. Right. Well, we don't know if it's hot or not, but yeah, it's, it's kind of chilling to think the number of babies that, that perish right here. Well, over a 23 year period, we suspect anywhere from 25 to 50,000 babies died in this facility. Wow, and a lot of them in this room. Yeah. What's this next room? Okay, Mark, this is the exam room. This is where women would get an exam prior to going into the abortion room. So you'd expect this place to be clean as well, but let me show you what's behind this door. Wow. That's about as nasty as it gets right there. Oh, this is absolutely disgusting. You look down in the corner there, who knows what is... Uh, Breeding we found. <laughs> Breeding, literally. It's uh I mean, it's, actually roach droppings and mouse droppings or whatever those are. It's, Look it's, at this carpet. I mean it's just it, it's, and this was an exam room with a with a woman who was thinking about having going into the next room for the procedure. This is where she got talking. Right. You know, I want to make sure people understand, and I I don't want to do this, believe me, but I want people to understand how nasty this place really is. And remember, again, as you told me earlier, just a right. couple of weeks ago, this was an operating abortion clinic. This is not like something that built up over the years. Look at this. Is that amazing? Absolutely disgusting. But let me show you just what's on the other side of this door. And the filth continues here, Mark. Uh, as you can see, there's no way that this would ever meet code. In fact, I'm kind of scared to even touch here, but you've got a circuit breaker box so close to a water heater that you can't even close the door. Wow. You know, we had a, our building's fairly new in uh, Life Dynamics, and we had a water heater blow the top of it off right. and flood the building one time. If that happened here, I mean, the sparks from the water going into that electrical box would do Lord knows what. Yeah. Uh, the place is really nasty. I noticed, Troy, that there's a, a rat trap or a mouse trapper down here on the floor. Did y'all put that here? Oh, no. Uh, that and others are located in the building. We have not changed a thing in this place. Wow. And 
in here, Lord knows what happened, but uh, it is uh, absolutely beyond comprehension how filthy it is. This is amazing. There's a cutting board here. Surely they didn't make a lunch or something in this room. Or um, There's a sink. Um, you know, I, I hope that, that people who are watching this can get a sense of how nasty this place is. And again, babies were being dismembered. Women were receiving invasive surgical procedures in this building just a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's astonishing. Well, what do we have here? Mark, this is the lab, uh, the area where they would do the pregnancy tests. That, uh, we saw the bathroom there a minute ago, and the women would pass their urine samples through this, uh, I guess, very well-constructed door, right. uh, and the pregnancy test would be conducted in this room. Wow. You know, that is, as filthy as this room is, this is the cleanest one in the, in the place. So. All right, we've got room two here, it looks like, uh, Troy. This is another procedure room. Um, boy, this looks like they just whitewashed the walls. They're, they're not painting, and they didn't do a very good job. Uh, of course, again, they're not taking any pride in this facility. You can see they're just painting over the sure. plugs. But, but, I mean, it's not even covering up the old blue paint that was under there. But the important thing to remember is, um, Troy, again, thousands of babies died in this room. This very room. Now, uh, next door, I, I see the sign says recovery room. Right. Okay. Right. okay. What's that about? Okay. Let's go in here. Wow. I mean, so, we got this is this is where the woman came to recover. Again, we've got electrical outlets with no no boxes over them. Right. Look at the the way the walls are matching up here. Right. Just as dingy and dirty as can be. Um, they've said that they've. Uh, clean the carpets, but I certainly can't tell that this place has well, been cleaned in The carpets all over the whole building are, are just nasty. Look at this, uh, another outlet. Not only does it not have a cover on it, part of the outlet's missing. Yeah, it's missing a receptacle. Uh, the so roof is coming in, and if you can see that the roof was actually leaking there in yet another place. And then we've got this, this thing over here by the windows where uh, the roof is falling down, obviously, and you, mm -hmm. you can see up and above the roof. Um, you know, Troy, when you, when you look at this place, and, and it's it's sad to think that a woman gets herself in a situation where she thinks coming to a toilet like this, and this is a toilet anyway you look at it, that coming to one of these kind of places is going to solve her problems. I mean, it, it's really sad that they, um, that they really believe that and that they're sold that by the media and by the abortion industry. Mm -hmm. It's real sad. Last thing I want to show you is probably the most chilling and frightening discovery that uh, we found when we got into wow. this building. Okay. So. This is the sink or the scrub room uh, that they took the babies to and they would literally put them down uh, this sink and as you can see there's an industrial garbage disposal. Well, Troy, you know there are going to be people out there that say, well, oh they didn't really grind them up in the garbage disposal. Some of the abortion defenders are going to say that. But there's absolutely no reason for a quote unquote medical facility to have an industrial garbage disposal. This is, and we keep on hearing this from ex-employees that that's what they did with them. I've had them come to my office and say, that's right. I had to work the scrub room, I had to hear the babies ground up, I had to push them down the garbage disposal. And now, this is absolute irrefutable proof that this, this is what happens. And you'll notice the bleach, you'll notice the Drano. Uh, I guess the baby parts clogged it up sometimes. Oh, I can smell it from here, but listen to this. This is the sound of grinding babies. What is that smell? It's a uh, pretty bad. That's Something came up. Obviously, the smell of death is is heavy right here in this room, and definitely down that disposal. You know, you think you sit here and you look at that Troy, and you think about it, it's it's even worse than being in those procedure rooms. This is this is where thousands of babies left this earth. They they went down that drain, and you know it's. I guess one of the, the things that I keep telling people about the saddest aspect of the abortion issue is that God sends a little child here, puts a child in a woman's womb, sends it to this earth, and the only interaction that that child ever has with other human beings is with the mother who took him to a place like this and with the animal who, who flushed him down that, that sink. And I, you know, if this nation thinks that it can continue to do this sort of thing and that there's not going to be a price to pay for it, we are nuts.
this is this is going to come back on us and I think it's already starting. I do. Absolutely.